Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Film Roundtable. Uh, today is March 3rd, 2021. And we have a really great, interesting conversation today with two of the artists from um, Darius uh, Martyr's film, Sound of Metal. And But before we get started and before I introduce everyone, I would like to take our um, moment of silence to honor all of the 2,563,830 worldwide deaths as of today uh, and the 529,307 U.S. deaths as of today. And we'd also like to take a moment to honor all of our Black and Brown brothers and sisters and all of our First Nations brothers and sisters who have senselessly died by the hands of police brutality and other random acts of violence. So let's just take a moment, please. Okay, thank you. So today um, we have a conversation uh, with editor Mikkel Nielsen and composer and sound designer Nicholas Becker, um, both of the movie Sound of Metal that has come out just recently and is getting a lot of praise, winning some awards, amazing movie. Um, and today we have uh, our moderator today will be Mark Thomas, who is also an editor and a sound designer and musician and um, loved the movie and we're glad to have him to sit with our guests today. So Mark, I'll let you take it from here and um, yeah, really looking forward to hearing you guys speak about this experience and what you do. Right on, thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, thank you. First of all, let me say congratulations on the film. I think it's, it's masterful uh, and really well done. And I, th I think it was a beautiful, um, experience to watch it and to listen to it as well uh, which can't be said for you know a lot of movies these days which everything is kind of you know superhero explosions and special effects sound effects and everything um so i wanted to kind of ask about you know the approach to making the film like how how did that unfold um in terms of the sound like in terms of designing the sound and how did that uh, play out in, in pre-production and how did it play out in the editorial process as well? So maybe I start, uh, Mikkel, because I think the first part was like, I mean, what's happened that actually, uh, I think Darius called me like maybe one year before, first time, like one year before he started to shoot. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we had a long conversation about, uh, Sound. That it, it was it was expecting um, a work which would be a bit maybe a bit different maybe something uh, a way of working which would be a bit like uh, more specific you know to the film so uh, I proposed him to come uh, to Paris to meet me so he came to Paris and we spent like one week all together really to speak about the film, you know, about the project um, and, and also um, exchange, you know, um, what we like um, in terms of uh, some bits of films, some music, some books, you know, we spent a, a, time, a lot of time cooking also, uh, you know, eating, drinking, yeah wine, you know, but just try to, to, to know each other, you know, and um, mm. it was, it was really, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's such a good start, you know, to start like on, on the human side, you know, on, on, on not on the, the technical side of, of the thing, you know, and then even at the end of the week, uh, Daniel Bouquet, the DOP joined us. And so we had a very interesting conversation about uh, the different toolkit we could create in terms of, of creating point of view or point of hearing, you know, mm -hmm. and how it could be eventually combined 
you know. So it was, uh, I mean, for me, it was an amazing experience. And then after, uh, what I said to Darius that also for me, a very important aspect would be to come in the shoot, to come to see, you know, during the shoot, to have this feeling of the mood, you know, of the voice, the real voice of the actor, you know, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. hear the, the different sets, to record sound, or atmospheric sound from the cities, from the, the, you know, like all a lot of sound from different sets, you know, because for me, I, I really like to, as a starting point, to be able to create a kind of first layer, which would be like quite naturalistic, you know, and right, from right. that, trying to understand how we have to twist it or how do we have to move from this uh, naturalistic perspective to an another subjective, more subjective perspective. And I also, we also discussed the fact that we saw that it might be extremely interesting to be able to collaborate closely with the picture editor. Uh, that it would be a great help to be able to, because if you do a film which is sound based and the work is only done on the picture, you know, it, 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 it's, there is a problem, you know? So, I mean, it means that if you do a film which, which the sound has, a, is very important also structurally, it means that you need to be able to uh, collaborate uh, closely with the picture editor and think about not as picture editor or sound editor, but about the, the editing, you know, just the idea of edi to edit things, you know? And, well, and, 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 yeah. Yeah, and if I could just jump in, I think, because that's one of the things that really stood out to me about the film is how well choreographed the sound and the edit and the picture all are, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? To create that different perspective and it shifts in perspective. I thought it was brilliant the way that it, so it's, you know, the way that it was executed by all of you. And uh, so it's, it's good, it's, I suspected that there was a lot of collaboration at that stage, as opposed to trying to just, you know, shoot it and then be like, okay, so now make the sound seem natural and, you know. I, I, I'm gonna just like finish because I think after uh, it's gonna be really like, um, Mikkel is, is as a, I mean, also his, his way of this procedure and, and the way is working is 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 and the the way for me so the, the, how he described his, his his approach of the work is so interesting you know so I just can to finish I can say that I will also try to provide Mikel a sound library you mm -hmm. know like that he was able to work with the sound the right sound you mm -hmm. know so I knew that what he will do will be the base of my work you know. So sometimes there is a problem in, in the process of doing a film where you actually, when you move to, to the end of the picture editing and you start the sound editing, sometimes like people are removing everything which have been done with the picture editor. Hmm. And, and, and it can be very painful and very complicated for everybody, you know? And I think it's, it's, it's quite a stupid uh, process, you know? So the idea mm -hmm. was like, okay, uh, I'm going to give you everything you need, you know, I'm going to provide everything you need to, 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 to for your work. And even during the period of, of doing the picture editing, you need my help to, to, to you know, I, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'm going to be f not full time, but each time it's going to be problematic for you and you need me, I'm going to be there, you know? Hmm. So, so, and, and, and I mean, what is fantastic that, Mikkel is one of the rare, really one of the rare uh, picture editor, which were so open about that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and said to me, yes, we need that. It's great. Thank you. You know, it's, it's going to be great. So I'm, I, I finished now and I think that uh, from that, Mikkel, you can, um, I mean, you can explain all the work you have done in terms of how to creating the, the characters, the arch, the, you know, I mean, there is so much to, 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 to say about it. Yeah. Um, hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, it, it's, it's, 
my 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 approach um, was very different because I got uh, involved in the project while they were shooting, uh, and there were maybe uh, three or two or three weeks before finish shooting. I had the first conversation or talk with Darius. And he he explained all his needs and wants and, and how he saw the the film. But I had read the script and I had also seen a few dailies because um, they shot the film chronologic. So so you could you could almost scroll through the dailies and see the progress of, of a, a character. And I found mm -hmm. it super compelling uh, the way they shot it. They shot it on uh, 35. So everything was uh, shot on film. Um, which is uh, also uh, interesting because it doesn't give you a huge amount of footage in the right. sense that it was almost like a, a European production where, mm -hmm. where you have to limit yourself because of your budgets. So, so therefore they, they were very structured in their way of working. Not meaning that they didn't shoot a lot of footage, but just that they, they didn't just shoot randomly. They they thought about what 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 to shoot, and and Darius had a very specific idea from the start, and he was like aiming extremely high from a, what we could call a debutant or a first time director, even though he has done previously a documentary, but and also he's been working as an editor, but but he right. had so high. Um, uh, wishes and, uh, and which I found really compelling. So my approach to the whole process was completely different to Nicholas and even Daniel's, which was that I had not met anyone. And, and I asked Darius to just give me the footage. I knew that they were already way ahead of me in terms of how to think and how it could sound or how it could look. And so, so I thought, it, the only way I can get into the process is by uh, taking the whole material and basically not know anything about hmm. how they approach it. Because sometimes mistakes happen and sometimes the mistakes will actually show new ways to do things. And it's mm -hmm. very easy to change if they already have uh, a way to do it. But I at least have an opportunity to try out some of the small techniques that you uh, develop through your skills uh, over a period of 25 years of editing, which I've been mm -hmm. doing. So, so it's like trying to, to try these small different tools. Um, uh, and that, that was, was extremely open to that. So I showed him the first pass without talking about any scenes, about any, anything. He came and he saw the first Pass, which was like three hours and 45 minutes. Um, and then we started uh, working. Oh, and, and I had asked with, with, the, uh, with the talk with Nicholas to get all the atmosphere because we knew uh, if, if he wants to achieve these things with the film, it has to feel very organic. Right. And we were, uh, we were a little unsure should 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 it be with uh, how should we approach the whole thing with the uh, with score so and 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 we're talking we didn't he didn't say it shouldn't have a score but but we were just talking about that there's a when you saw the dailies there's there's something there's a quality to the dailies without uh, the normal way of working with a score where you also add the, the, the emotions or you add these things, it becomes very raw and real without it, almost like a documentary. And because we knew that, that if you play around with perspective, a hearing perspective going in and out of that, and if you, if you add uh, uh, emotions or the internal, his, his, his uh, Ruben's emotions uh, through the score as, as um, from that uh, sound you hear up in the start and you continue that almost like in, in different variations, it almost becomes like a, a, a river, uh, hmm. how the water will flow down. And, and, and that's how I approach a lot of the scenes that you would see that you don't want a river which is just straight ahead. You needed to go uh, 
a little around the corner and around the, so it becomes organic and you have small small bumps on the road and then of course uh, the 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 key to everything is that you cannot know more than Ruben all the way through. If you know the exact same thing as Ruben in the story, you feel that you're with him. And also if you play around with the perspective of, of uh, it's the, the key scene is the pharmacist where he goes after he loses his hearing because you get annoyed. You get right. annoyed yourself as an audience that, that it's super frustrating not being able to hear all the dialogue or going in and out of that. And it's almost like a horror. It, it's like, if that's how it is to be him, Jesus, what's going on? I'm losing right. my hearing. I am losing my hearing. And then you go in and then you start losing it as well with the doctor and even you progress it. So you kind of develop these small languages of how to approach a scene and go in and out of it. And, and with that contract, with you as an audience or me as an audience, uh, we can we can show these things through down the film. Mm -hmm. And if we create everything very organic up to the point where we know it has to be extremely digital, mm -hmm. then you have the clash of that thing. And hopefully you feel the same loss as your main character if you follow mm -hmm. that journey. So that was, that was kind of um, the first approach. Then we knew that that Ruben loses his sense of music. He he doesn't see himself as a musician after losing it because he cannot play music. Therefore, he's not a musician. Joe asked him, so you're a musician? And he's asking, no, I'm not. Anymore. <laughs> not until I get the cochlears. Right. For him, that's the world, right? Now I just have to, he's a fixer. But we hmm. knew that we had the scene of a boy suddenly awakening that sense from him again to play the drums when they're on that slide. And from that moment, the whole wo world opens up again for him. And time can pass. And after time has passed, you from that moment, it has to be exactly the mid of the film. From that moment, he also knows sign language. He's, he is a part of society but you're left outside you you we have to subtitle everything he's ahead of you he starts to have um he starts to have um a project which you're not part of why is he selling his stuff in the airstream why is he saying what's it all about why is he calling the archaeologist all these things you what you are on a discovery with ruben suddenly you're behind um so that was the, the whole approach to this. And then to try and find uh, the arc and the balance of the structure. And that didn't happen until very late in the edit process that we found out that by bringing the concert up as the opening and mm -hmm. allowing it to be without, not treat it like, uh, normally you would treat that if you put a concert up in the opening, you would treat it more like a title sequence or something. You would have these things, but just showing what this is about, you see these people and you feel you're present. And, and Nicholas and, uh, and everyone in the mixing did an amazing job because if you see it, I, I actually saw it in a cinema and you feel you're completely present you feel you're behind those drums you sit there by yourself or with the guitar in that concert it's just like being at a club again and also because we miss it so much so <laughs> therefore it, it's just really uh, uh, aggressive and and you're almost on the uh, edge of your seat because you're like wondering if this is that loud from the start what's going to happen but it's just going right. to be more and more silent all the way through but you don't know Right. You know, there is something uh, I think about that now, Michael, is the idea that when you speak about the fact that the first part of the film, uh, in a way, you know more than the character, the main character, and yeah. the second part of the film, you know less than the character. Mm -hmm. I was thinking also about me, the work I'm doing is also to kind of play also with the positioning of the audience. Yeah. Sometimes you are looking, you know, with right. the sound, sometimes you are looking to, to him and sometimes you, you, you are 
in him, you know. Mm -hmm. So you you can you know with, with this two way of of changing you know your relation or with time or with space you know you can really create something very interesting you know and 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 and, and, and uh, complex you know and and Absolutely. I think that that was like very interesting to see how powerful it is to combine you know some tools like editing tools in general. If they can be sound, sonic or, or visual, but you know how it's so important to, in a way, you know, when you think about uh, M. Das Murderer, you know, the, 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 the old Fritz film, Lang. yeah, Fritz Lang, mm -hmm. where first film, first sonic film he did, and he used, you know, the, the sound of, of the whistling, you know, Right. To 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 you know uh, so I, the, the, there is the, the, the most important element is the sonic element and you see that mm -hmm. he said like okay it's I'm doing a, a sound film you know first time I'm doing a sound film so I need to integrate sound as you know a st an element a, 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 a dramatic element or a storytelling element you know and I think that. Time after time, some films are, are like that in the story of making of, of filmmaking, but it's very rare, you know. So I had the feeling also that with this film, it's we propose something new, but we also pro propose something what it should be, you know, like a more complete uh, um, vocabulary, you know, uh, something which 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 is more. Uh, interesting you know and and and, and, and like a, a more complex weaving you know and and, and uh, i think it's it's it was for me it was i felt like i was lucky to be able to to work on this film and, and also to show that combining you know uh the picture and sound we can really working together we can really push forwards and push boundaries and 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 and, and creates very interesting things also with the audience you know with the positioning of the audience you know no it's true i think an interesting effect that i really noticed watching the film was um, i think by use of kind of a, a kind of negative space that you guys created through contrast um, was a very tactile, like a very uh, sensor, like touch sensory effect. So, for instance, uh, there's a scene where after there's a, um, after the first concert, right? It goes from being very loud to being them in the trailer, and now suddenly you're very aware of all of the normal sounds that we all have, whether it's coffee dripping or the blender, and then later when those things are absent. Right, I yeah. felt almost like a like a like you know how they say like a blind person hears more clearly when they lose their vision. I felt that was like the yeah. touch of the blender or like yeah. the heat yeah. of the coffee pot or all these things yeah. because of the absence. <laughs> but Mark, but Mark, that that's the contract with 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 the right. audience, right? Because right. because we 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 called it awakening the senses, and 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 it's like you you create an inferno of of uh, uh, sounds in the concert and then you cut to silence and you enter that but you you have to awaken he's waking up and he's looking out so he's like looking out but he's also using this air dust thing Crash, which I love. putting <laughs> putting the coffee on so you hear the dripping uh, yeah. the smoothie all these things because we need we need to create that language that this if you have experienced these things with your main character, the the moment he loses it, you right. might feel that you lose it, but it's it's only until the point where you see the image of a smoothie or a coffee machine without the sounds that right. you understand this is terrible. This is awful for him because I felt I was inside, and it's it's a little bit like cheating almost, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like okay, show it's show and tell. Uh, but but it really it really works in order to for us to to open our senses and eyes and ears and and go on that journey. Yeah, and, with them. And also this tactile effect. It's also because you know when you lose hearing, it's just also very 
normal in a way that when you lose hearing, <clears throat> your body and the tissue, your bones still conduct uh, vibration right. into your, into mm -hmm. your cochlea. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in a way, you, you, you're still hearing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, your brain thinks that it's hearing, but it's, uh, in fact, it's, it's vibration. Right, which which are transformed to the idea of sound, but sure. so yeah. I think it's reinforced this tactile aspect, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, instinct of doing real sound or stuff, we we really try to make it real, you know. And I think that it's very similar actually when you are hearing are not working. Is it's it's an effect which is very similar than when you are underwater. You know? mm -hmm. so that's also something we we all know you know that's also the resonance of your own voice you know when you right. speak you know sometimes you you you're recording your voice and you're like oh my god this is not my voice you know it's it's weird you know <laughs> yeah. it's because you know because when you talk you know we 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 have all this vibration you know may you know we, we so right. so we, we know that very well you know so when it happens, it seems weird, but it's not something we don't know. Right. You know, it's, it's right. something we, we, we no, never experienced in, in, in a such crazy way or extreme way. So we, we, we can feel that it's, uh, it's right, you know, in a way that it's, it's not something uh, unfamiliar, hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's also, it's a bit like, the first concert, trying not to give something uh, which is not existing also, you know, like, so trying to give the feeling that you are, you know, the, to, to, to give you, to give the audience the feeling that they really uh, experience the concert, right. you know, and, 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 and to feel that this, the two, the two musicians, they're not actors, they're musicians, they play music, you know, it's not a, uh, it, it, it's not um, it's not fake, you know. They, they they learned for seven months how to play music, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 also a way to engage. I think the people in 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 in, uh, in the world, which is a very uh, raw and uh, uh, realistic in a way. But you make it. We, we make it physical. It all. It's almost physical to 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 experience, which right. is uh, which is. Um, rare for for, uh, for for a lot of films, um, mm. and, and and it's yeah. no also just the fact that that we use the word sound in the in the title, but also uh, the sound becomes a, a, a story. It, it it's a tool in the storytelling box. It's it's like we can we can basically decide ourselves how much information we want to give you as an audience mm -hmm. which is a extremely uh, uh, powerful tool when when you find the balance and you find the language of how to create because because simplicity is also extremely important except that it's not simple it's super complex to create it, but it feels simple. So the more simple things feel, uh, uh, the 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 easier. I I think we as an audience will experience things, almost like being there ourselves, because it's not. It doesn't feel. It's not fancy. It's not like a, a music video fancy. We don't have cutoffs in the concert. You are there with him. If he doesn't hit the drum it sounds like he's not hitting the drum. You feel that he's actually doing all the things because he was doing all the things. And because the sound quality of it, uh, it gives you that feeling. You know, uh, Mikael, I don't remember if I told you, but maybe I spoke about that to, to, to Marius. You know, I, I, wrote, I, 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 um, I was reading a book recently, like it's a neuro, neurologist, you know, yeah, and he, he 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 wrote a book called the Inner Cinema, <laughs> and he explains that in fact <clears throat> we uh, as as human we 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 get discrete information. So everything we get from our ears and our uh, view is not linear. Mm. You know? 
So it's it's exactly like fins, you know. It's like it's like bits, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's actually our brain which is recreates the linearity, you know. Right. And being human, we have, it means that we are actually our first. We are directing what we see. <laughs> But we are also in the same time the main director of the film, right. the, main, the main actor of the film. Sorry, yeah, we are in the same 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 time the same actor. Meeting our own reality, right? Of course, so you I was, right. yeah. your own life. Yeah, and 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 I was thinking that this form of film, you know, is very similar to that. Hmm. You know, as 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 a way of of proposing, you know. To be really like immersed, immersed in in the body, you know, of someone, you know, That's which true. is yeah. leading leading the story, uh, you know, and I think maybe this I was thinking maybe this form of cinema will is, is very interesting and, and 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 but it's also very close from life, you know. It's it's, it's that's I think also why it gives you maybe very specific uh, emotion. But I think it was also very skillful how, you know, it, it, both with the sound and the editing, again, like there's not, I don't think there's any like L or J cuts in there where you're crossing sound to the audience that might not know. It's where you're crossing sound and picture at different points. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, there is, but, but, but the, they not. have, well, that's not in the scenes. I mean, it has to be hot cuts in the, between the scenes, but, but, but you do have uh, these dissolves from uh, the outside world to the inner world. Right. Uh, and the first time is uh, after his hearing loss, uh, um, after you have that tinnitus uh, in the merchandise scene, mm -hmm. uh, you see a concert, but you hear the concert, but uh, there's a tracking into him and, and you kind of go into his internal. It's a language we have to create for the film. Right. Because if we don't create it up in the start, it doesn't work in the end where Lou is singing with her dad. Right. And you have to have that feeling that this is what we experience. And we almost, some of us get a little goosebump. But then suddenly you enter the world of Ruben and you take that away and it's a complete loss for him. It's suddenly you're reminded of what he's going through. Right. And that's a language you have to, you can't just, because it will never work in the end if we don't show it up, so, like place it some, a few places in, in the scene. And we do it in that, the concert, and we also do it on the piano with the kids. There's a mm -hmm. piano piece uh, where the kids are uh, with their hands on the piano and you enter, you, you go to that internal sound of Ruben as well. So it, it, it these things, in order for, for a scene to work, it has to create, find that key to, to know that this is a language that we can actually go in and out. What, what, yeah. also, what also is specific, Mark, that the fact that uh, uh, Darius uh, is an editor also, Darius is a sound editor, yeah. Darius is a musician, is a script, script writer. Yeah. So the idea was not also uh, the relation we 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 with uh, we, we we the way we worked with him was really to help him to work, but not to do the job. You know, it was really like, you know. So we he spent a lot of time uh, with uh, Michael. He spent a, a huge amount of time with me every day in the room, trying things. You know, so so it was not like, hey guys, do do a good soundtrack and do a good a picture editor, and and see you in two months. You know, yeah, it, it, it was extremely consistent and and, and specific uh, with both of us, uh, and spent a lot of time with with both of us. You know, and spent a lot of time also after in during the mix and spent. You know, so it's. Um, these days, it's quite rare to have a, a, a director or so uh, who want to really work with these ends, you know, in, in, in the whole process of making a film, you know. And I think it makes a huge difference because we can take so much more risk, you know, in a way. Yeah. So, 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 and I think but that's, that's great. 
but it's funny, right? Because Nicholas, I actually felt that because Darius had spent 12 years trying to do this film, mm -hmm. and because some actors went and, and learned sign language and playing the music, and because it's trying for the first time, I don't know if it's the first time, but at least the idea was to try and give a minority uh, a feeling of a whole experience as a deaf person, you would be able to experience the whole thing because we would also do closed captions and, and we wouldn't subtitle the, the ASL scenes until the midpoint where Ruben knows uh, sign language. So that whole idea of giving someone else, I, I can feel from coming from a small country, I'm from Denmark, we are a small country, we have our own language, but no one speaks Danish. So of course I have to learn English <laughs> in that sense. So, so it's a little bit similar to the feeling that the whole idea of giving uh, 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 people the first experience and me as an audience, as a hearing person, I would have the feeling of being left out and sit yeah. with that uh, and feel like, what, what was that about? Why are they laughing? What's going on? And we actually felt that, Mark. I saw this film in Toronto uh, with a huge audience of uh, 1,100 people or something. And a lot of these people were from a deaf, uh, 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 from, from a deaf, uh, um, uh, with, with that. yeah, and, but, but, and they had that experience. I saw it and I felt it and I heard it and I heard them laughing in scenes where I didn't know what was going on. And everyone else was feeling that uh, the same thing. That's mm. amazing that you can actually create that. You have a vi vision and a dream for so many years. Therefore, for us, for Nicholas, for me as an editor, of course we have to go these extra miles and and try these things. It's it's not a nine to five job on a job yeah. like this. Absolutely not. It's passion. It has to be that you're trying to develop that language and say, what if? And what if we turn that stone? What if we try this with the scene? What mm. if we stay a little too long on the image because then you get a little annoyed and some people might think that it feels slow in that section, but maybe it's because it does something else to you that it brings in the silence and you feel that in the end. And so these things, it's a balance. Um, and, and that was just super interesting to work with a person like Darius because he was so open to the whole process. But at the same time, he was extremely challenging. He challenged the, uh, me as an editor all the time. And I love that. I love being able to say, what if we do this? What What if this? What will this do? The yeah, sometimes, would be yeah. sometimes I, I had like a complex moment or so, you know, because uh, there was this question about uh, the additional uh, music, you know? Mm. And it was like, uh, it was at, what, at one time he came back from a session of uh, grading he did in LA and he was like, uh, you know, we, we, are, we are mixing in three weeks or four weeks and, and we have no music, you know? Like the whole thing is music. <laughs> you know, like, like, but you really say like, you know, you were supposed to, to you know, to make it work, to, to, to push, you know, and, and, I, I was like embarrassed because I, I didn't, until this moment, I felt that maybe there is some musical moment, but uh, I was not into that, you know, I was thinking that we need, we need to, to, we need to be in the, in his world, you know, and you need, we, we need, we need to, to be with, uh, in, in this community, we need to, to feel the insect, we need to feel the hair, we need to feel, you know, I mean, we need to really have, give the feelings that we are here, you know, and, and we, we are, we are, this happening, this is happening, you know, right. and, 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 and in, we, we, we are in this world, not another world, fictionary, crazy abstraction, you know, we need to be there. Mm. And, and so I didn't know how to, to deal with that. And uh, luckily at one moment we were, because with with Abe, his brother, which is also wrote the film and which creates the music for the concert, and and we we did actually some additional musical moment together. Finally, we understood that 
nothing could couldn't be stronger than the first sequence and i think also it came when you also decide Mikael, to put like the the the, the, the concert uh, you know as the opening of the film you know yeah we yeah. we understood that nothing could, could will not be stronger than that you know and and so music we if you want to create like to additional to, to create some additional music a bit strong or structure or too much formed you know it's gonna be stupid you know because because it's a bit like i remember like uh, the story of uh, it's what's the name of uh, moondog you know the musician mm -hmm. you know the musician moondog is, is a crazy musician from new york he was found by charlie parker in the 40s mm -hmm. or 50s in, in the street of new york and he had a story, he, he was, he, you know, he was blind. And just before, just before uh, uh, he became blind, he went with his father in a powo, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they were listening powo in an Indian reserve because, you know, and they came back from that and they had an accident. His father died, wow. the Aka accident, and he became blind, you know. And after all his life, he, he kind of continued. He was always in all the music he, he, he was he, he actually composed. He was always playing, you know, the the, the drum. You know, mm. a bit like to try to recover the, the moments before the accident. Right. You know, and, and I think for me it became a. Bit, I thought about that. You know, like the music is him trying to kind of remember you know this emotion or, or the memory of of the first concert you know that's so, that's how in the edit Nicolas, yeah. that's also how we work with it that that whole from from the moment up to the first image of ruben sitting and in, in the same uh, uh, kind of image like the the ending it's it's the, it's the yeah. same composition <laughs> but there's like there's that feat of is it a guitar or what is it that feet is something we worked in uh, uh, editing uh, uh, trying to say it's that long he's longing back the whole journey from when he's losing his hearing he's almost longing back to that moment just before he starts playing that whole sex that whole sound of going up to that point where you want to fix it and you want to go into it again hmm. so, use that so, as a yeah. language as a music language in order because then it becomes an inter that was what i tried to explain a little earlier that that internal uh, emotional journey of ruben that the music becomes that and of course <clears throat> you've added so many beautiful things uh, 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 with the music uh, differently but but it still has that feeling that it, it's almost coming from something from the past that he's mm. trying to to remember or feel you you feel you've you've experienced it with ruben as as a, as a material we use for that was like a kind of weird open tuning of a guitar mm. <coughs> which were a bit linked to the to the chord of the first uh, uh, concert <coughs> and also i use some very weird metal instruments very strange instrument which are uh, <coughs> Sorry, not non temperated So, you know, they are not in tune. They have no natural tuning. Right. I heard. It, I think it, I read somewhere that you used a, like a like a crystallophone to or yeah, it's it's called, it's called it's called crystal basher. Okay. Yeah, I love those. <coughs> but they are amazing instruments, and I use the older one, which are well, you know, because I have these two guys. I invent this instrument. So the first one, they were really, really like um, um, prototype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after musician came and said, like, it would be nice to, to create some of them which are tuned like that, that we can play Beethoven or Mozart, you know? Uh. But the first one, they were totally wild, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you listen to the sounds, it makes it's a bit like a chaos, you know? Right. And it's, it's, it's not it's it's kind of not organized it's it's messy but it's ghostly you know and we saw that it's going to be perfect for you know also um, the state of mind of of ruben 
<clears throat> you know, he tried to recover something, but he will never recover that. It's yeah. going to be only a kind of ghost memory or kind of traces, but never something consistent. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting. <clears throat> Arius is doing that. He wrote like he has all of these different skill sets because I think in terms of um, you know getting that personal experience. And having the shift in perspective be from inside to outside, like I think the a perfect example of that. Well, there's two that come to mind. One is the drugstore again, where when you cut to the the wide shot and suddenly you can hear clearly, and there's obviously um, you know this character is man that's in distress, and I feel like we've all been in that situation where you're seeing somebody in distress, but you don't quite know what's going on, and we know exactly what's going on because we just left mm -hmm. his perspective. I think that's very. Mm -hmm. And I also think that, that the choice of having sound in the deaf uh, community, how we're, you know, we're able to kind of hear things, but we're like, as, as you said, Miko, like, you know, we don't know what's going on, <laughs> but no. we're, we're, we can hear everything, but there's a yeah. gap in our ability to collect information. Yeah. And I think that that was, uh, that's very skillful on so many levels in terms of story, how it's how it's uh, illuminating, you know, Ruben's journey. And then also just as an experience, which is really, again, I think what was so powerful to me was, you know, not, being able to kind of feel like a lack, but then that <clears throat> created another uh, space for me to kind of experience the film. I think, I think that's why also it's interesting to see that <clears throat> Michael is also a musician, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we all the people working on this film, like the DOP is also a photographer, you know, like, I mean, we also people, I think the, the team is, is made with people which are quite open, you know, in a way. Right. They, they're not like stuck on their own practice, you know. For me, I, I, I'm like, okay, sound is my material, but, you know, uh, you know, it could have been, I mean, like it's, it's more like opportunities or like sensitivity, you know, like specific sensitivities. But I'm so curious about acting, picture editing, you know, the work of, of I mean, like, and, and so I think uh, Darius want, I think wanted to have people like that, which are open-minded, you right. know, and be able to be collaborate and, and, and exchange information with in a lot of different levels, mm -hmm. you know? So, so like that, the weaving of, 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 of the film is very complex, you know? And I think that's great because it means that the film also, you can see it many times and there's always new things you can see yeah. or feel or understand or, you know? That's the kind of film you really, you know, you can see again and again and even when you are working with picture editing i'm sure or the sound editing you're like after a long time you're like oh you know you still discover <laughs> things you know yeah because because if you speak with the, the, the costume designer how they work with all the <clears throat> the, the different t-shirt you're wearing with different uh, uh, bonds according to the, the mood of the character, you know, like, and everything is like that, you know, all, you know, like, he, he, there, there is so much ideas everywhere hidden in the film, you know, at so much different level, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's also very, I mean, that's great. I love that. Either he's very <laughs> lucky or he's not. <laughs> or both. <laughs> or both. Um, in terms of the actors as well, because because Riz is also a musician, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about um, <clears throat> the? Well, I'm I'm getting the actress's name who played Lou. Uh, Olivia. She, Olivia Cook. Yeah. Right. Is she also? A <clears throat> I mean, what I can say about Riz that. Um, uh, for me, for me, I, I don't spend so much time with actors. Right. Sorry, yeah. I'm coughing. <coughs> I, I hit I, I a small allergy. Um, um, and um, 
so I don't use to spend so much time with actor, but I would say his was amazing. I mean, like <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the attention he had about me, you know, during mm -hmm. the shooting was like incredible, you know, and, and the discussion we had and, 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 and I mean, for me, it was a fantastic experience to be able to to work with him, you know. So, and I think he's he's, a, he's a, such a clever person. Also, mm -hmm. he, 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 he he read a lot. <clears throat> he knows so much about. I mean, like he's someone also super open, mm -hmm. you know. So he was able to also connect with everybody on the shoot, you know, and try to exchange and and. <clears throat> so I think it's 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 I mean like for me that the I hope that also this kind of way of working like that uh, in a, in such a great collaborative way is a bit like something utopic and I think it's it's it, it's I know <clears throat> I know that now at this moment because we are, we are all because of the COVID we are all missing that so much you know yeah. But I think it's so important. So I really hope that the people, when the people will start to work again together, they will understand the value of of of, of this, you know, and not only being individual, you know, but also the the power of, of working together, you know, and communicate and exchange, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, for me, yeah. that's why the film is so important. I also it and it, it tells so much things about the now, about the moment. Hmm. Yeah, I think a film has been such throughout its history. It's been such a hierarchical, you know, um, uh, industry. And I think, you yeah, know, yeah, yes, hierarchical, and also it was made like in the 19th century. So it was like. It's really like hyper, hyper capitalistic kind of structure, Taylorism, you know, with like everybody is doing like this and this and this and this, you know. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing because it's also an utopia to see like all these people working all together to do in one film, one project, which yeah. is a fiction, yeah. which is something very specific. <clears throat> but in the other hand, also there is this very like uh, <clears throat> super specialized organization, hierarchy, you know, la 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 la. And I think that's that's something I, I I I you know I think that's that should it sh I hope it's going to change in, in 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 this direction you know yeah. for example uh, no way that for example in I would say that in France it would be very extremely com it's still very complicated to work I to 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 work with Mikkel the way we have been working. Hmm. Of course, there is some of them, and now I'm working on a new project, and, and, and I, 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 again, with a, let's say, a young, young editor, not young, but like the girl who did I the- I feel young now. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, yeah, but I mean, no, sorry, but like, I mean, like, yeah. No, but it's a good thing. It's a yeah, good yeah. thing. No, no, but, but I mean, like, the girl who did, like, Atlantics from Mighty Diop, you know, it's, it's the, and 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 it's it's great, you know. But if I comp because me, I start to work. I was very young. I start to work in, in the film business. I was twenty, so I was a baby. So I used to work with with directors or or, or, or editors. They were a bit like my father, you know, figure. You know, it's slang. Did you yeah, work they with were like, slang? No, you shouldn't do that. You don't know. Don't talk to me. You know, you don't have the right to talk to me. You should talk to my assistant. You know. Yeah. Never talk to me again, you know. It was like, you know, and for me, it's such a relief now that I, uh, of course, I'm getting older, but <laughs> that's why it's it it's more simple. But I, you know, but I hope that people will more work more and more like that, you know, in that way, you know. And yeah. I think Danish people have naturally this thing because they are not imperialist, uh, uh, you know, people. They, 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 you know, they have this very uh, social, you know, cultural culture. I think uh, yeah. of of working together, or, or you know, or, or helping each other. I mean, like it's 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 much less. I mean, that's my feeling that it's also culturally less individualistic, you know, than France or the U.S. or or England. No, it's true. It's true. 
is true. We have brought up on a different culture. We've brought up that it's okay to invite each other into the room and look at each other's work. It's not a competition. It's about trying to raise the bar. And if I respect you as doing the same thing, I'm not afraid of you taking my job. I'm actually more interested in you bringing in your expertise of maybe heightening <coughs> The, the project so therefore we can all develop and become better at what we do or maybe even make a better film or better show whatever it is um, yeah i certainly think there's a there's several that's that's very much like what me and bradford young's uh, relationship is like you know where mm. it, he gives me a lot of kind of room to explore ideas and then mm. you know we we are able to kind of find the best things you know <laughs> whether it's my idea his idea you know or or the combination of ideas and, and i feel like there's a lot of people that are moving in that direction that uh, but but mark if we don't if we don't know if we don't try things if we don't have the uh, there's no right and wrong in the edit process but right. at my table because we d we simply cannot know what works and sometimes these small mistakes create a huge world suddenly that opens up and you're like, what was that about? Yeah. And you explore it and it opens <laughs> up a whole new world. And then you call Nicholas and you say, what if, what would happen with this? And oh, that's interesting. Let's look at that. And you bring something new into that thing. And then you're like, yeah, but it's not really doing, what if we take this or move it around? And then suddenly you have something really unique sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't work at all, but at yeah. least we try it. And yeah. it has to be like that. I mean, it cannot be the way that you just explain me how to do things. I can't just be your hands, basically. Right. It has to be a relationship. It has to be a dialogue. And it's interesting that film hasn't developed that way because when we were editing on a Steinbeck on real film, mm. it took the exact same amount of uh, edit time as now. And it's because, of course, we can edit faster and make the edits much faster. And we can show you multiple uh, versions of things. But in the end, the process of taking things in and thinking about, is this right for the movie? Or if it's, is it wrong? What if we did this and this and this? It's exactly the same. Yeah. It's the same amount of time. Mm. Yeah. It just can't be sped up. Yeah, I was assistant to an amazing uh, sound designer who did like uh, Delicatessen and uh, all the Car Jeunet and Carol's films. And it was super slow, you know. And, and, and each time he was saying, you know what? It gives me more time to think. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> more. You know, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Good yeah. to think more, yeah. you know, and it was so right, you know, you, you can't, yeah. you can't, yeah, you can't, you can't. Yeah, I, I always say it's about putting one thing next to the other thing, you know what I mean? And you're just in a constant state of like, yes, no, yes, no, or, oh, wow, what's, you know, and then you build, that's, that's the whole process. And, there's and many I think, I think, I think also like the idea of, not succeed is so important, you know, like to make mistakes and not succeed and you oh, know, yeah. to, to consider like maybe half of the time you need to do some things which are not working. It's so important. And like everybody, sh like also like, because if you don't do that, it's, it seems every, every things, every, every film start to look the same, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, I, I, I'm okay with series, but it's, why I like 10 times much for me, it's 10, 10 times more important to work with films and series that with series, you don't really have this time to think really, you know, and try things. So even if it's really good, everything is like, you know, you exactly, exactly what you, you expect, you know? It's, yeah. it's very rarely that I'm like, wow, you know, amazed or, 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 or you know, I'm like, wow. I, you know, it, it can be really great, and I have a lot of pleasure to see some stuff. But I'm never, uh, uh, yeah, it's very. It's I see what I'm. You know, it, there's no no much no much uh, no much. Um, I would say uh, new things. You know, in a way. Yeah, I mean, the process of art is exploration, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to be able to try things. Mm -hmm. 
some of those things will work, some of them will not. And mm -hmm. then some things you won't expect, you, you weren't expecting to discover. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. takes time, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, thinking about that, um, in terms of like the the per so well uh, let's go back to to the soundtrack again if you briefly if you don't mind I'd like to hear a little bit more along um, with the choices that how you decided to actually uh, implement that instrument and in the in the instrumentation that you did because there's some parts I notice um, that one that particularly I think it might be the first instance of of, of sound added to the score is uh, where they're, he's walking with uh, one of the deaf women in the forest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I first kind of noticed it. And it was interesting because it was similar sounding to the opening scene in terms of the feedback, mm -hmm. but it did have that ghostly kind of dream. I, I think maybe the first one is, uh, is maybe when we are in the audiologist, you know? Okay. Uh, you know, but. I think that also what we want to give also the feeling that uh, because it should come from the characters or it should come from the film itself, that it shouldn't come from the director in a way, you know? Right, right, right. So we, we would never feel that I'm the director and I'm putting some, you know, like it's not like, you know, 2001, you know, it's like, not like boom, you know, right. it's more like, my, my, what I, I said to Darius that for me it would be amazing that if we really feel that it's like if the, 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 the film itself was doing the music. Hmm. You know? So it was not, it was like a, a, a natural pollution, you know, mm -hmm. of, of, of the film itself, you know. Like like a car, you have like some smoke outside, you know, like the film is producing his own, you know, kind of material. Right. So the idea was like most of the time, or oh, it starts with a sound, like the car who can be transformed, who transform himself in, into the into a music, or oh, it's it's a music, but this music is is going back to a buzz or to a resonance, or mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's more a bit like uh, hallucination, you know, or something like uh, a distortion, you know, right. of, of the reality or an echo, weird echoing of, of, but it's never, it's always from, you know, the picture or from the story or from the, you know, it's, 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 it's not coming from anything else, everywhere else, you know, it's, it's, it's really. Can I say something? A little thing to that was that it was so difficult to find out what it should do actually, because we could not, in the edit process, it was difficult to create a language where you understood that we want to have a hearing experience with Ruben as the, uh, that we feel that we're inside of him. But how do you, how do you make that traveling section from them, uh, he, him and Lou being in the in, in, in the cafeteria and she's calling the sponsor and then she tells that she's found a place and you travel uh, through the night or maybe a few days to Joe's place. Mm -hmm. We simply couldn't get it to work with a score where if you put music on, you just, it, it's just a language where you sit back and you relax and you feel, okay, now, now it's a montage or something. Right, right, right. But how do, but how do we stay, how do we create a montage of emotions? How do we create a montage of, of his inner struggle, Ruben's inner struggle, which is that it has to have these hard cuts with the sound but also that that uh, quality to to the the at least that uh, to to um, that high level of uh, anxiety or panic inside of Ruben, hmm. and and I, I I think you what what you created there, Nicholas, is is such a beautiful way because it's a key to understand Ruben when he enters that place that we have been traveling and it's storytelling in a very, very, very interesting way. 
because we feel it's too, uh, it's wordless. We don't hear any words. We just see our main character in this panic room. Yeah. And we feel it with him. Mm. Mm. But also the fact that it's very acoustic instrument made of metal. Mm. It's, it's, it's really like melt to the, to the real sound, you know? Mm. It's true. So it's yeah. it's really something where you can use. It's a bit like it's very subtle, you know. Yeah. And because it's not in tune, you know, you're not sure it's music. You, you, it's it's like a, a feeling, an intuition, or something you're not sure about. It's mm -hmm. there, but you can't really exactly describe the shape of it. You know, it's like a ghost. You know. You, 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 it's there, but you don't know. You, you, you just know it's there, but you, you can't really describe it precisely. It's interesting because a lot of times in film, right, like the level of attention, usually a lot more uh, heavy-handed. It's, mm. it's paid to this kind of this this level of attention paid to sound is like in a horror film or something, mm. right? Where it's hyper manipulative. Mm. Um, And this is such the opposite, <laughs> where you're you're really just like it's 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 an unusual experience as a as an audience member because you're you know you're you're like well what yeah yeah you know the first time I heard the the kind of when I was able to identify that there was some sort of a sound mm -hmm. happening that wasn't part of the environment, um, it was haunting in a way, but then it was also just. That I realized like, well, that's just because I'm not used to, to hearing something this uh, unidentifiable that's not trying to make me do something. <laughs> But I think there is something very beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, a French poet, which I really like. His name is Edouard Glissant. He has a beautiful theory about opacity, mm. you know? And he said like, uh, There is something, uh, you know, it was a discussion we had uh, with, with uh, was very interesting discussion with us, with Darius, because I, he said to Darius, he's, he's really a master in terms of storytelling. So he really want everything to be clear, to be understandable, you know, and, 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 then, and then I told him, it's funny you asked me to work on this film because what I like, it's ambiguity, opacity, <laughs> mysterious <laughs> things. <laughs> sure, you don't, you know, you're not sure about it. You, you know, because I like to question the audience, you know, right. all the time, you know. So I think it, it was it was clever enough to understand that. And and I think and in his way also, uh, uh, Michael has another way of of telling stories, you know. <clears throat> and so it was, I mean, it was clever to bring us, you know, with we had very different very similar sensitivity but we're working with different tools you know mm -hmm. and it was, i think it was it was extremely That's clever true. to to from him to put us together you mm -hmm. know with, with these differences you know i have one last question if, if we have time uh, you're on mute Uh, really quickly, I think Miguel has to jump off because he has a call. Okay. It's so, true. Yes, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm so sorry. It, 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 can I say I'm very grateful that you allowed me to be part of this. Thank you so much, Mark. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Nicholas, uh, um, and, and I would love to continue talking, uh, but uh, yeah, I have to be somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all good. It was a really um, great conversation. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank both. you. Yeah, we're thank gonna post so it on Friday. So I look forward. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank it was you. great. Bye. It was great to speak with you. Have a good evening. Thank you guys very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. <laughs>